Well, just finished dinner with Scotty. Uh, best kind of dinner, really, at a really nice place, and he paid. So that, it really is the best kind of dinner. Um, I'd love to have a discussion about how the horses went today with Scotty, but he drove one and put it on the run. And then uh, mine were flat. So uh, you had a good day otherwise, so congratulations. Good day. Thank yeah, you. And I'm very happy for you. Um, we had a so-so day. I told you guys in the opening video, the horses were okay. They were okay. We got to um, work on pickpocket a little bit. I think mostly, do you guys find, I guess, do you drive many of the horses before they get here that you drove today? Probably not. Eh? Yeah, no, I've trained them and then qualified them I, and then drove them. I wonder if it's more of a transition from the tracks they were at to Kentucky. They just didn't feel like we just took all the grab off them. And I think the yeah. track was kind of deep today. Like pickpocket felt good following, but when you guys stepped on and coming out of the turn, yeah. he really has never been out trotted before, but felt outmatched today and now he's been off three weeks almost four weeks but we had no grab on him not a drop of grab on the horse yeah. and the track did seem deep was it deep well, you drive a here a lot sa it's sandier more than it is clay nowadays but uh it's a tough adjustment because there is no other track like it so it's very hard to prep a horse for this it feels like it even militant was second you now your horse went a good mile and militant beat a maiden at the meadow so it's not like he's coming in from stakes company no right right so he didn't he didn't really race against those horses before. But then you're also going to get people that uh, have very talented horses that that's lack right. a little experience that are going to start and, them at really cheap. We had a great conversation. I had a great conversation with somebody today, and they said, Anthony, I looked at the program. He really fits well with those horses. Now I had just said to you, hmm. take a look down the list of horses we raced against and look at how much they cost. Expensive animals. Just one second. got to get a little something for the road. Unless they're closed. Um, yeah, can I get a venti uh, iced vanilla latte? Do you want anything? No. Even better. Dave's getting iced better. Latte. What else for you? That's it. They actually, uh, no, I got one. That's it. Thank you. Okay, six sixty-three. Um, you're racing ants, as you put it, inexperienced, very expensive horses. A lot of people look at the calendar and say, "We just want to have them ready for Kentucky," yes. right? And it's hard to grasp that. Like the horse that you raced. You know, you said he was immature and green, but you did go 29 in a piece, 59, 128, and two a mile and 56. Yeah. Regardless of the track, that's that's a. Uh, oh. You said uh, what size for the king train? That is a decent mile, and yeah, it was good. and militant. I think, although I don't think he was slipping. He had aluminum's on up front. I don't think he was slipping. He literally looked like an overweight wrestler pulling up. He was panting, like blowing hard. And I had said in an earlier video, I think he just doesn't handle the heat well. Maybe a little bit porky. So I said to, to Eric, make sure you jog him and jog him hard early in the morning uh, before the heat hits here in Kentucky. Militant, I'm convinced and certain that <clears throat> when you guys went to take off and I couldn't, it was because he couldn't get a hold of that deeper track. He literally just said 916 with no borium or cork or anything on up front. Yeah, but as a driver, it's very difficult. Like when you have variables out there, which Brian Sears' horse ran over top of somebody. That's true, him, that's true. Made a break, now you you cautiously have to move yours, grab yours, oh, and then wait, you gotta catch back up now. But so he's, it's he's, very he's, tough. That's how we train them too. He should be used to that. I just thought when I asked him to accelerate, he was flat. Now he could have been short, but here's the kicker and here's the difference. He ran in late in the mile. He's not sore anywhere. I think he was running in because he was hitting a little bit because he touched the inside wheel. Mm -hmm. Why would he hit a wheel late in the mile for no particular reason unless he was interfering and trying to get away from it? Possibly. I find horses' strides get a little bit bigger they, better here. Well, that's true, too. That's true, too. It could be. Either way, we're going to add a little cork to him, and I am toying with the idea of putting the hobbles on. Unless the horse won in 56 without hobbles on, but the training wheels are off now. We're here to race. It's race time, and... If we're going to be able to use him in a more effective way with hobbles on, then I believe he should be wearing hobbles. So, um, toying with that idea, and I put Scott on the on the hot seat, and I said, listen, Lonely Lakewood, would he be better with hobbles on, to which you said? I said, yeah, well, they won't hurt, certainly, but he just wasn't steering great is why he made that break. Running in a little bit, yeah. But so yeah, again, lazy breaks are not fun. Yeah. No, they're the worst kind. Yeah, because you, now you're timid trying to get a meta yeah. first gear. That's no fun. If you And that's why that's the whole thing with pickpocket is that if I'm going to end up getting away sixth instead of second, I'm behind the eight ball from the start. Yeah. Unless they're going to go hot fractions, which they Ooh, do not go. If you left out of there, it would have got salty. We were flying. 27 and 4 is yeah, actually no, a massive first quarter. Yeah, I wouldn't, there was near zero shot. I was going to go to there with him. Yeah. But he, you know, he was okay. 56 and 4 off almost a month is okay, but I expect more from that guy. 
So, um, overall, Militant was good, all things considered. Pickpocket was adequate. And Lonely Like Wood, you, you put them on the run. Yep. So we'll put the Hotwells on next week. Um, I did want to talk about the two-year-olds, and you can't really help that much except for the ones that you know. Uh, that's all right, man. Thank, Thank you. you. I did want to put it to you that now uh, Activation is almost undefeated in his life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pulled up the past performance lines last night and I noticed his only blemish had uh, your name beside it. I know. Uh, and just to let you know, I won his last two on the front end. Well, I severely got defeated in the qualifier, so you could add that to the mix. <laughs> oh, that's true, too. Way. Oh, we're going that way? How do I get Because like we need to go to left at that light. Oh, okay. So i got to go. Yeah, see. So there's an exit. Yeah, okay. All right. And I don't need gas, so we're all good. Uh, yeah, he's. it's hard to believe he's been that good. But, man, he was very, very good the other day. Jogged. Now, I have to work. He makes you work for every inch. Like, you got to drive him like an 8,000 claimer. Yes. But... If you're okay with that going out the door, there's a good chance you're headed to the winner's circle. At least right now with the horses he's racing against in the Stallion Series company. Yeah. That was an Arden, I think he won the other day. Where are we going? Yeah, right. Okay, left I see. Way. Left at the left. Yeah, he'll do it. He just needs uh, some severe encouragement. Yeah, you got to lay in him. So we're going to talk about the two-year-olds real quick. I did do, so I did do a two-year-old video earlier. Scotty thought it was funny. It's not so funny now. But I had to do a two-year-old video earlier, and uh, the heat crashed my phone, and no more video. So, um, I'm going to do one right now. AC Swan will be heading to Illinois after her qualifier on Monday. Her and Ali Baba will both be going there. Um, Arson. Uh, Scotty and I talked a little bit about Arson. And I think I oversold him is the way I pretty much said it to, to, to Scotty. Um, I thought about it and then went back and looked at a couple of his training videos, actually, after I spoke to you. And realized that he has never, ever been exposed like that. He was always on the front or in the two hole training or covered up. That's why he raced so good his first start in uh, in uh, Oak Grove, covered up the way he was. That's how he likes it. Second over, although it's a perfect trip, it's not him. It's not for him. So uh, Scott knows that now for next time. So um, I jumped over affection. That might happen. I might jump over somebody here because I'm trying to rush. Uh, affection is going to rate you're driving here on Monday. She's uh, the one you do, sweetheart. She does nothing wrong. That's the one that had no head, head check. check. Yeah, she's got it on now. She's fine. She did hit her jack uh, a month ago. It's blown up, but it doesn't bother her. And I drove her last week. She's fine. Um, Arson Blanton's blue. What you said he's in to go somewhere? Uh, futuristically, is maybe is it? Was he just at Batavia? He raced. He just raced to Batavia. Mark drove him. Okay, he's third. Then maybe it's a Saratoga on a Friday. Yeah, must be that. Okay. Yeah. She asked if Mark had kindergartens, and I said I don't think so. So oh, I see. Hopefully, yep. Mark's on a Saratoga. Friday. Yeah. So Blanton's blue. Um, a little underwhelming himself his last start, but okay, raced okay. You drove his sister last night, Mom Basita. Um Born to Dance was made a break. This is the other dancing Yankee. Yeah. Jumped over Shadow on Brett, leaving the gate two weeks ago. And then he almost got in trouble with him yesterday. He almost run over somebody going into the first turn. Yeah, yeah. He's got a fr a little. He's got a tough jaw on him, this horse. But um, in anticipation of a, a subpar effort, we put him back in Wednesday in a in a maiden series at Northfield Park, where I'll be driving him. And there'll be no there'll be no issues come Wednesday with Born to Dance. The one thing about the one thing I love about this colt, right? Right lane, lane. Oh, the one thing I love about this colt is he is tough, 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 tough. And he's back in on Wednesday. Cherahola's going to the sale next uh, next month. She's in the sale. She get injured. It was actually our most expensive trotter we bought right in the lights. Most expensive trotter we bought in um, Ohio last year, and she got injured. She got hurt. So, um, so we got did not know we'll be coming back in in two three weeks from the field. Don't talk about Bruno, this Crantini's brother. Yeah. Doesn't do any of the bad stuff, but isn't nearly as fast just yet. Mm -hmm. He's racing in the Prospect Series. He's an alarm detector. Uh, finished fourth the other day. Uh, they get over the half slow, I think, half and three, a mile and two, two or something. Right, right. So we can turn on the right. Yeah, but you got to wait for the cars to go. Mm -hmm. It's a rule. It's a rule. So uh, Bruno, I thought, raced well. Just starting out his career. That was his first lifetime start last week, I believe. Drebin, this is the Walner quote that I like. Uh, got an abscess on the front of his knee that blew out. I don't know what he got, a splinter or something. That was weird. Um, but his knees are bothering him a little bit. So we're going to be cautious with him. But I am going to jog him Tuesday and Wednesday just to see how he feels for myself. Uh, Easy in the turns is back in out of the field now. She's been back in for a couple of weeks. Electric Line will be coming back in in a couple of weeks from, uh, from the field in Pennsylvania. 
flash fly the other day. That's the Philly flash fly. Um, she made a break leaving the gate, but she was so quiet in Philadelphia. We changed her bridle, changed some stuff, let her hobbles out. And I think she just went to bounce from the car and uh, quite a bit more hobble there for her. Mm. And she just rolled off stride, but she'll be fine. Um, George of the Jungle is still swimming. He'll stay swimming uh, for another three weeks or so, and then we'll uh, reassess him. His knees were just hurting, hurting him. We're just waiting for everything to fill in and cool down and then make a decision with him, but he'll likely see some field time also. Um, great bet was a winner. Scott Young won with him uh, the other day, last night. Uh, do you talk to Scotty much anymore? Uh, randomly, yeah. I like Scotty. Red lights. At the lights? His bright lights? Yeah, Jesus. Bright lights. Um, yeah, he won with a horse. He actually drove him good. And he won with him last night in 55 flat uh, at at uh, Kawartha Downs. Oof. Yeah, really. Uh, Gypsy Hill is racing Friday. Now, i got a little problem. I was talking to Scotty about it earlier. Gypsy Hill and Memory and Imagination race on the same night. Uh, my first uh, instinct would be to drive Memory and Imagination. But my wife, uh, being an intelligent woman... Right by that truck. Yeah, right. Being an intelligent woman said, well, why don't you just wait to see what they draw and how much they're going for? Because mm -hmm. they're both kind of similar. I want to drive them both, but I probably can't. Now, I also said to you, maybe if I can get one of them in early and one of them in late, I can mm -hmm. leave the meadows and drive down. We'll see. That's a little bit of a long shot, but we'll see. Uh, Hallie in the Clouds is out in the field. She'll come back in in a little bit. I'm Fancy Like. We just talked about her also, the white face dancing Yankee filly. Um, she will, she's racing tomorrow at Lisbon. You don't have to make it to an Ohio Fair one of these times, no? No, no. And if I did, I wouldn't bring my soup. No, no, you don't have to. You just come for a spectator for the I noodles could, in the I corn. I watch to cheer you on. But... Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of fun tomorrow with I'm Fancy. Like, insider trading. We just talked about the green shoes. I will tell everybody right now, um, they've been problematic for some people. There's been a few good ones, but a lot of them have been letting people down. And uh, I suspect, if I can read the winds right, that we're probably going to end up with a truckload of green shoes this fall at a value discount price <laughs> value discount price you know it so um that's likely what will happen i know i love insider trading i love pull the shoes uh the filly you drove she's a nice filly but she has been problematic putting it all together but we'll get her squared away we have a number of green shoes that i, I thought very highly of and i certainly well, i bred two of her mares to them i don't have a problem mm -hmm buying some of them and we'll likely end up with a whole pile of them by the looks of things. International Spy has to come out of the field in the next week or so. That's the international money from uh, Lindy Farms. Yeah, I tell you, he's having a good run international money. Yeah, he's been a good sire. Yeah. We have one mare in full to him. Um, one mare in full to him right now. <clears throat> okay, where are we at here? Uh, Irresistible Sun, that's a triumphant caviar colt. He raced really well. I was telling everybody in another video, Lauren had called me and said one of his testicles was big and the vet thing said it's kind of it gets twisted and he's he said we may have to castrate him. just the nicest horse doesn't mm -hmm. do anything wrong but he might have to be castrated in between stake starts if there's enough of a uh, enough of a window there to do it i don't know uh, he's okay day to day he's okay he just has the odd bad day um where are we at here is this son jayport beach boy third the other day tied up that is the mcwicket brother to uh, ian morris horse that one in indiana what's that horse's uh -huh. name uh uh, no, no, the real oh. good horse from two or three years. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. um, Levesque in action. She's going to be sold at the end of the next month. It, just a really slow horse, to be honest. Um, what are you going to do? We trained her down. We raced her. We gave her every opportunity to be a nice horse. And it's not that she doesn't try. She's just not very good at it. And it would be like the equivalent of me standing in a room full of singers attempting to sing. Right. Even with the best coach. Skunk at a tea party. And that's kind of how uh, Levesque in action is. Uh, Lonely Lakewood, Scott put him on the run today. We might try the hobbles on him next week. Again, I'm toying with the idea for both him and, and uh, Pickpocket. We'll see. I have five hours more to think about it and asleep tonight to think about it. Lover's Play got injured. Uh, I love this filly. And she trained down great. She's decently bred. Decently bred. And if she doesn't make it back to the races, I'll probably just breed her. Uh, in March or April of next year. I hope she makes it back. I know she, she's tough. She's been tough since day one. So if any of them can make it back, it would be her. But we'll see uh, We'll see how she comes with the rehab. Mick Paisley, third the other night. I thought she raced okay. She'll continue to race in the Prospect Series. Mel Gibswan. I don't think you qualified him. I sent him out to Burke. He's a, a swan for Alcolt. He was second, beat a nostril in the first Sire Stakes. 
and was third last night. Probably should have went by to win, but kind of hung out mm. and finished third. Um, Militant raced okay today. It was second year horse in 56. He tried a 57. Decent mile from him. Mounds for all. The brother too. Tactical Mounds who just won in 53 at the Poconos tonight. Uh, he made a break going in behind the gate and I know that Adam had told me Adam Rucker is yeah. Burke's guy out there yeah. and Adam had told me he just thought that he didn't have him on his toes going to the gate and uh, that would change for next week. No chance in Hill. <clears throat> had been training great. Been in 2-6 and then ended up just a minor, minor tear in a suspensory. And it healed quick because I think it always was there a little bit. I keep mm -hmm. telling people this. I think it was like 2%, 3%, and then he gets sore on it. And he goes, ah, it's 5%. Mm -hmm. But it's all healed up now, and he's jogging great. That was uh, two months ago, six weeks ago. So he's been jogging good, just a, a really nice colt. Uh, Paycheck Princess, that filly you went with, remember you put her on the front and she kind of fell apart in the end of the mile, ran in a little bit and got beat. Yeah, uh, she did it to you again, right? She did it to me, yeah. she did it to T-Trick, and mm -hmm. I covered her up yesterday and she, she walked and I just said, oh, just turn her in the field. Did you? Yep. Oh, okay. She's gone to the field. Uh, she's turned out now and will be turned out for the rest of the season. Pickpocket, a little flat today, but I just don't think he was getting a hold of the track. I don't I don't think, uh, Eric and I talked about it, and the shoeing that I picked for him was it wasn't the right one. It was my fault, and uh, I think he'll be much, much better next week. He'll be tighter. He'll be better. And if we do put the hobbles on him, I think he'll be even better for that. And if we don't, that will be fine also. Prince Charmer is racing Wednesday in the Maiden Series at Northfield. He should be really good. Pull the Shoes was exceptionally good yesterday. She just keeps getting... That's the green shoe that I like. She's out of a sister to six-pack. We scoped her twice now. There was just a couple of drops of blood in mm -hmm. her throat. Not really enough. You would say put her on Lazex, but enough that we really have to be aggressive when, when trading her. So, um, really interested to see how this filly goes her next start. Uh, did I jump over a couple? You must have. I did. I jumped over. Oh, snap you. She's good now. Oh, snap you. She's jogging. She had a, she was ready to qualify and end up with a line on her knee. So, she had three weeks in the stall, three weeks in the water walker that the vet has there. and She seems good now. So, we're, we're jogging her back. Uh, pull the shoes. I just talked about her. She'll be racing... Uh, on the 10th in a uh, Stallion Series event. Punch the clock. I, in my last video, I explained it really well. So uh, Johnny was worried that something was missed with the filly and he felt bad and James did also because Johnny had told me the week before she raced she was a little off right hind. So I went with her on Tuesday. I thought she was fine. I had the vet come in Monday before I went with her. She thought her knees were a little sore so she did her knees. Which two-year-old trotters, typical thing. Um... <clears throat> She couldn't find anything else wrong with her. James warmed her up on race night, said she was a little over on the shaft, but not bad. And then she pulled up lane. Mm. So uh, we had our ultrasounded the next day. They didn't find anything. Waited two or three more days, had her ultrasounded again. And Dr. McKee found that the little piece of her cannon bone had popped off at the back of her suspensory. Now the suspensory ligaments, everything is intact, but just the tiniest little piece of bone had pulled away and it was really painful. She said, but Anthony, that's not what you guys were talking about. That happened on race night. She goes, I can tell you that because there's no trauma around the injury. There's nothing, no mm. little blood vessels were broke or tears or anything you could find. There's nothing there but that little thing. She goes, and that happened on race night. You can tell that was right now. That's why she acutely pulled up lame and then was sound like an hour later when you pulled the shoe off because that was the issue. She has a bruise or a pus pocket or a corn or something in that right hind that has been bothering her. That's likely what Johnny saw. That's likely what James saw. But it's certainly not why she is sore today. Mm -hmm. So two things were bothering Punch the Clock. Uh, the one injury she did have is very treatable. She's going to inject it with Pro Stride next week. Shock it. Just got to give her time. And she said she will recover. So she'll make it back. But she is done for the season. <clears throat> Purple People Eater was second in the Sire Stakes the other day. Just got beat at the wire. And raced great. Uh, ready for landing. We opted to turn him out. Were you, you were in Toronto that night, I think, for a stake race, the night I raced. That's the yeah. tactical landing Colt brother to what they owe. He did well, and then you said you didn't want to keep racing him? I didn't. I he, turned him out. That's an interesting move. Yeah, he raced awesome. He just, he was at a precipice where he could be a nice horse. He wasn't quite good enough to go to New Jersey. There was nothing really left for him in Ontario, and I didn't want to hurt him. So I thought I'd turn him out and let him grow up. I think this could be a really, really good horse at three. Uh, we'll stake him heavy at three, and I think this will be a horse that you and Megan will have. I really, really like this colt. Really don't care. You said she struggles in the turns a little bit on the tight tracks. We'll, we'll give her another couple of cracks at it, and then, you know, she has to come back. She'll come back, but um, we'll see. Where's she racing? She made a break she on you and Yonkers. Break. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she didn't run at Buffalo. No, no. Oh, no. she stayed at it in Buffalo, and then uh, made the break behind the gate with you. What had happened? No, just, just the other day. 
Well, I didn't have her on the bit hard, and I had the eight hole, which it goes very fast on the oh, outside of the that's track. Right too. Yeah, and yeah. she leaned in and just—it was a really lazy break. Like, I guess I should have had her keyed up. Well, no. Did you learn anything from the other nights? No. Yeah, I don't key up two-year-olds. <laughs> Uh, Rito's lady is back in now. She's at Harry's Barn, but she's not going to stay there. She'll come back over to our barn, but we got to bring Looks Like Money back. we got to bring Resolute Bay in from the field, and when we do that, uh, she'll be pushed over to the other barn. Um, Royal Emeralds, a poor performance the other day. I'm going to work on her this week. We're going to race her in a maiden at uh, the Meadows. I hope she's much, much better. Seasons of Love is out for the season. She'll come back in. She was just immature. We'll bring her back in mid-September, probably something like that. Sedona Hill was our only horse that missed the board in the entire. We raced a whole raft of horses, and the only one that missed the board was her. She was fourth, but she raced really, really well that night, too. Fourth and 58. Sunset Acres Girl, three wins in a second now in Michigan. None of them fast. The other races that you see go 215, 212, 218, just on bad tracks, but she's been racing good. Sweeney, three lifetime starts through the eight hole, the nine hole, and the eight hole. Did you leave it all? The second time I did. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> but I probably won't. I probably won't on uh, Wednesday with him. He's a nice horse. Third and six is out for a little bit, and he'll remain out until... Uh, and now I guess we'll bring him back in. Um, time is on my side. That's a crunch call. Yeah. 55 last quarter, 27 his first start. He was so-so. I thought he was good, but, you know, you always want him to be better. And then we had to scratch him the other day. He's scope full of mucus. Right. Now, how are the crunches down here? They haven't been great, actually. Haven't which been is disappointing great? because they're all good-looking individuals that everybody complimented how they trained down so well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, There was so one far, one the other day. One of state Yeah, days. Meadows. They won a couple, actually. But... Well, uh, the expectations were higher than the delivery. Yeah, yeah that's so a good far. way of putting so it. Yeah, far. and this is a big colt that wears a 61 inch hobble. There's yes. no, there's no reason for me to believe that he's even remotely scratched the surface yet. But it is up to him to come forward. I can tell you how he should be better and might be better. But it will be up to him to come forward. I think he will. Harry's doing the right thing, taking his time with him. Vaccaro Blue Chip the other day had Dan Charlino on him, and he didn't put him on the gate, and he got away fifth and. Mm. Anyway, it's my Is fault. Is that the one that I broke with? Yeah, you made yeah. a break with him too. I didn't want to bring it up, but yeah, you made a break with him too. Yeah, but you had just said he wouldn't run on you because... If you tighten the hobbles up. Yeah, yeah. But I think we there may have been lost in the translation. Okay. So uh, he didn't break on Charlie? No, no, because oh. I set the hobbles for him when he oh, went out. Okay. He couldn't have broke if he wanted to. Oh, you had to go somewhere else? No, I had uh, memory and imagination oh, in that race. Okay. They ran together. I won the race. But anyway, yeah. it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> Venice Blue Chip. Venice Blue Chip. Uh... A little bit, I, I, she's really pushing me. Um, um, she's trained down great, looked great, was a nice filly. You asked, actually asked about her. And um, I, I just get the feeling she's underachieving, and I, I don't know why. This is a filly that trained great, never trained, never, ever would be ever uh, thought of as being an underachiever training down. I don't know what is going on with her. She just doesn't feel like she's putting out the best she could. So maybe it's just growth, maybe it's something going on with her, but... Uh, she's doing well. She's third, third, fourth in the Sire Stakes, and she's going to race on Friday. But I, 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 geez, I hope for a little more from her. So I hope she starts putting out a little bit more. But if she doesn't, it'll still be an okay season. But it just feels like it's just a hair wasted, just a tiny bit. Yeah. But that happens more than not. Yeah. It's because your expectations were so high. That's right. I'm trying to be tempered, but yes. you, you asked about her an hour ago. The eternal too. optimist you are. Well, you have to be. What's the point of going in and not being optimistic? Uh, Victory Blue Chip bled the other day. That big grand and Colt bled. He's on Lazex now. He'll race next week. Watch Your Mouth is uh, racing, I think Harry said, on the 10th. He'd run down really bad behind. They're trying to clean his ankles up. Uh, I think they got him going in the right way. Widespread Panic. James is going to go with him on Monday. I'm concerned uh, that James won't get along with him. But he may. He may. He's going to qualify him on Monday. Winter Bells. This filly here is a lot like Venice Blue Chip in the sense that I feel she should be doing a lot more, but she just feels like she's hanging out a little bit. Um, this is a sister. I don't think you drove this one for Casey. Uh, did you drive a horse? In, did you win the Battle of the Bells before with a horse for Casey? I don't think so. Her name was Play the Bells. Anyway, yeah, this is her full sister. That was recent, yeah. Yeah. She, um, this is her full sister. She trained down really well, but just has been, I think Scotty Young drove her in Sarnia the other day. She come charging late and was like third and 55, but... I really thought she'd be almost a Sire State horse, and she hasn't mm. quite got there. So uh, it looks like I'm going to have to come down next week because I'm going to assume if you didn't, if you didn't pick them this week over what I told you about them, 
the performances they put on today really wouldn't push you up. Yeah. It really wouldn't carry them no, the rest you, of the way. You didn't beat me. I, I picked the two better ones, evidently, today. You did. I, I thought for sure when I dropped in behind you going in the first turn with with yeah. Militant, for sure I was going to crush you. Yeah. I, I, I might even have shit talked you going by. I would have you would have crushed me, yes. He, just, he did okay, but he just wasn't good today. He's good enough to be second. He just mm. wasn't awesome. Uh, pickpocket. I really thought that he might be fifth or sixth, but I just wanted to see a good mile from him. Yeah. I was only a tiny bit disappointed, and I'm almost positive it was a shoeing. And then uh, Lonely Lakewood, you really disappointed me with putting him on the run. But uh, we'll put the hobbles on him and see if we can't see if we can't fix that. Where are you off? You're here for the next two days. Yeah. And then where? Uh, where do we go? Um, you told me you can't Friday. You can't Wednesday, drive Friday. I fly back Tuesday night. Wednesday, po Pocono qualifiers. Drive a new good one. Who? I can't say, but new good. Oh, new, oh yeah, you told me that. Okay, yeah, new yeah. good one. Mm -hmm. um, Thursday, just Yonkers. Friday, Meadowlands. What about the fish, Steve? Plan Saturday, Saturday Hambletonian. So, oh yeah, I forgot. So uh, I forgot to tell everybody. So Hambletonian. he was like, I, we're, "We're after the race yesterday." So he's pouting a bit because he got beat, right? And there's nothing he do. He just got beat. It was the way it was. And uh, I had a couple of people actually ask me, say, "Why would Scotty Green move?" <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what. Here's the thing, and I told Scotty the same thing, and he was a little upset because he doesn't need Anthony McDonald telling him about driving tips. But uh, here's how it played out: You got away in the two hole, or you let Yannick go. Let Yannick go. You let Yannick go, thinking you're going to remove. But he yes. stretches you, and he goes wide open to the quarter. Yeah. He's not going to tap the brakes and let you remove. He's going to stretch. No, you. he dared me to remove <clears throat> by tapping you did. the brakes hard, yeah, which you did, yes. and he stretched you. Yes. So you make front with the favorite. Yes. He follows along and he beats you at the wire. Now, yes. Scott's angry. When he comes Multiple up. beat me, but yes. Three beat you, yeah. Um, you're a little angry after the race. I said, hey, yes. what are you going to do? You're fourth. It's just the way it is. And I told him, Here, here's how it plays out. Uh, you leave Yannick on front. Which it was first quarter? 26 and two. one? 26 two. and two? Yeah. The halves in 54 55. and four, 55. If Yannick's on the front and you never beat him. So then you go under the wire, a strong second, and you are talking to yourself under your breath for the rest of the night about not removing the horse. The only way you beat Yannick yesterday is if you if you push him into the two hole 25 and three. In hindsight, that was the only way you could have won the race. He beat you both other ways. Or if his horse was very good on front, I just leave him up there. But I have to stretch him 25 and three to the quarter to take a little sting out of him. Yeah, maybe. And then hope he gets me to the pass. Either way, light. the quarter had to be 25 and a piece. Yes, yes. Yeah. But that would have played into Redwood Hanover's hand. And well, that was my brother. James Wait. doesn't get a flat tire, so therefore he probably gives Yannick a Not bigger run. Not many people knew that, but uh, James had somebody step on his tire and flatten his tire at the half. So Redwood Hanover was second and 49 with one flat tire. Um, so yeah, James might have won. Might have easily won. But might have won. Yeah. But you might have won. I can tell yeah, you who wouldn't yeah. have won. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. So Scotty's stewing. I say, hey, what are you gonna do? You know, you put the, you drove the horse right. He just wasn't good today. So I was about to leave, and I made the error of saying, "So what's up tonight?" And uh, boils over, boil in in Scotty fashion. Didn't like yell or anything, but just you could tell it like incensed you. That I didn't know and and didn't think didn't put two and two together that it was a Hamiltonian Hamiltonian Oaks eliminations. So I'm going to tell everybody something. I travel around a lot. I'm with my kids when I can be. I'm at ball games. I'm driving our horses. I'm thinking about horses. I'm talking about horses. If our horses are not in to go, I'm not watching for the most part. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought James was going back to Mohawk last night. Mm -hmm. I did not know. I it just didn't register with me. That it was Hambo Oaks and Hambo Elimination Site. It bothered him because I should know. But I had to explain to him that I don't... If we're not in the... Like tonight. I don't know what, what's racing tonight. Mm -hmm. Tactical Mounds is done. Yeah. My night is over. I don't know any other horses that are in to go tonight. That's not true. Curtis forgot to put on the list. We have a horse racing in Minnesota tonight. <laughs> I forgot. But aside from him, I have no other recollection of what is going on. I don't know what's going on tonight. And that's just how I am. And, you know, I've been driving for a long time. I'm 46 years old. If I'm not in the race, I'm not that interested. Right? And and that was what I tried to tell Scotty. And he, he seemed pretty incensed about it when he left uh, the Meadows yesterday. It was part adios. Well, part adios, but then there was also the time constraint. We had stake races to get back from mm. Meadowlands. That Meadows seemed to have been conveniently ran 40 minutes behind schedule when we didn't have 40 how minutes to spare. You? Well, I would have been okay if Beyonce wasn't playing in MetLife. So, <laughs> so when we get back, 
we touch down on the ground. The third race is behind the gate. We're all like a bunch of us are in the fourth race. Mm-hmm. Teterboro's only ten minutes away, so that's okay. Can't the, get in. The the lineup was maybe four hundred cars deep. I drove. <laughs> I drove into Oak Grove the second week, and uh, Taylor Swift was playing, and I'm on the highway. We stopped on the highway for whatever reason, and the football stadium, so it must be where the Titans play, is it? Yes. Well, that's Nashville. 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 Yeah, Yeah. I flew into Nashville. So I'm driving by. Yeah, it's open stadium. Yeah, I'm driving by, and it is absolutely jam-packed. You couldn't fit a human being anywhere in that place, and Mark was saying he... (laughs) Yeah, I know. Mark was saying he drove the other day, or drove when she played there, yeah. and you could hear, he said, you, it was almost like you could feel the the ground shaking from... Oh, yeah. From that light. Oh, we could on, hear it on the track when we were yeah. yeah, we could it, hear it. It's, it's unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, it was 400 cars deep, and the judges are calling, saying, hey, we're going to we're gonna hold up the fourth race for you guys to get here. Now, we're all in separate cars, so we're all staggered of how we're getting there, right? You know, mm-hmm, one guy's going to beat mm-hmm, the other mm-hmm, one by two minutes, mm-hmm. whatever. But it's just the anxiety. The just you don't the, take that well, eh? Well, I just just take me off the horse. I don't want to drive the horse thing. I'm not rushing. I don't want to rush yeah. and cut 400 people off and get honked at. So Linda calls and says, hey, uh, just cut this way and get in front of these people. I'm driving hers in the fourth. Yeah. She's like, you can make it. I'm like, I, don't th- I disagree, but I, I will make a solid effort. So I do that, and I'm literally staring at the paddock. But there's still about 40 cars in front of me. I'm staring at the pad. Yeah. Judges said, uh, we got to send them out in like two minutes. Are you all right? I said, all right. I mean, two minutes, it sounds like doable. Lot, yeah. like doable. I'm looking. I just need just need to go ahead here. And they said, well, we'll have someone post braid your horse. So now I'm pot committed. Now That's I have crazy. to drive in the so race. So now you're... Dexter books off, calls him and says, just take me off. <laughs> well, now I'm stuck with the, I told him I could make it, leave me on, and someone will parade the horse. Well, now I'm now I'm way behind. The parade's already gone out. I'm watching. I'm not past the toll booth yet. So I now I'm gonna actually hold up wagering in general. So, That's so good. So it's you know you know what I had to do, full Ross Batten style. No, you didn't. I, the suit over the clothes. I couldn't go back to the driver's room in time because I didn't have time. There, the, the you zero, have no idea how much this would post. bother Scott Zeron. I'm surprised you didn't like have a hot. Do you have hives? I had my shorts and t-shirt hives? on, just my normal clothes. I threw my suit on from the trunk that I wore at Meadows on with the helmet on, the boots. I didn't I felt naked out there. I had nothing on. How I did just, you how did you I finished third as Sylvia Hanover won the race. It was a big race. Like you know. Yeah, so I made it, but yeah, you asked Same me, what am, me what do you do on Saturday night? Like I had nothing to do last night. Yeah, but I'd see it I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know Sylvia yeah. Hanover. Oh, I, catch a movie. Yeah. I left I left the Meadows. I didn't even get my picture taken the other day and I drove to Sayota. And I'm coming down the road. The judges call me. <clears throat> I told them I was going to be late. They said, Anthony, we're going to post parade in two minutes. I said, guys, my GPS says I'm three minutes away. <laughs> they said, well, we'll get somebody to post. They post parade the horse. Oh. They opened up the security gate at the grandstand. I drove through the grandstand where the the security gate, drove up to the paddock, blew the bathizer, get on the bike, and drove the horse. Mm-hmm. I wasn't as lucky as you. I made it. Well, you don't get you don't get anxiety. No, like, no, you, you would hold up the whole program. <laughs> it didn't yeah. bother me at all. But knowing what happened to you last night actually will not only keep me awake the entire way to Northfield, yeah. but it will make me laugh. Yeah. I'll just be driving along in really? two hours, mm-hmm. and I'll actually put this video on just so I can laugh yeah. about the anxiety you went through. Yeah, it was brutal. Anyway, uh, so next Friday, kindergarten for sure. No yeah, no Blanton's. going to... Uh, no Blanton's Blue and no Meadows. No Meadows. Is it a second, close second? Like if the kindergarten horse falls through. I would go watch Oppenheimer at the theaters before, before you go and drive I memory would and imagination. Fly to Meadows yes. to drive memory and imagination yes. in a Sire State race because win. you can handle it. But I have, might have to go drive Gypsy Hill. No, you, you go drive not. Gypsy Hill in a while. You will not. Anyway, all the videos are done. That was a two-year-old video right there, and a little. That is the greatest. I want everybody just to snip. I know that you can cut the video. They you know? watched. They watched the Brad Toscano post braid my state course in the fourth race. So they knew that I was somewhere, greatest. but I wasn't I didn't. there. Do you know who didn't watch the post parade? I had no T-shirt on underneath my. Seat. That is the greatest <laughs> yeah. ever. Do you know who did not want to watch? Who did not watch that post parade? Yeah, you. I know Me. that. I yeah. did not watch that post parade. So uh, that is all the two-year-olds we talked about in the bonus footage. You need to snap that. Just cut it. 
and put it and keep it away. Keep because you have no idea. If you knew him as well as I do, you have no idea the anxiety you felt must have been palpable from outside the car as you were coming into the paddock. Yes. Well, they forced me to drive. I told them, no, just take me off. I'm not going to make it. And if I could, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And they said, no, 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 we'll hold it up for you. Well, now it's not just holding up for me. I got all the drivers, all the trainers, everybody's just okay. waiting in limbo so now if, for you Scott feel, to maybe get through the Beyonce traffic. So you feel like everyone's looking at you and angrily looking at you when you get there. Oh, I'm sure they were, especially when I got there for the post, for the after post braid, and then I'm looking at the teletimer say one minute to post, and then they got to add two more minutes because I'm not on the bike yet. That's so yeah. great. I mean, it's that a nice really privilege. Made, it's a nice privilege, but. I, that made my night, and I didn't even get to watch it. Yeah. That made my night tonight, and it happened yesterday. Anyway, uh, funny stories. That was fantastic. Maybe the greatest story ever. I have had a pretty good weekend. Not the greatest day in Lexington. Uh, Militant did race okay, which is good. He's turning the corner. He's turning into an okay horse. Uh, pickpocket, a little flat, a little short. We're going to try and fix that for next week. And uh, maybe put the hobbles on both him and Lonely Lakewood so that Scotty can keep him trotting next week. That would be handy. You, if you book off them, because, oh, 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 I, I could would book kill off you. Them. That'd be perfect. I would kill you. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you all very soon. I have a five-hour drive ahead of me, and it is 8 o'clock. I'm not getting back to 1 now. Thanks, mm -hmm. Scott. Mm -hmm. I will talk to you all very soon. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a great week. I did. Take care.